how does life-saving bone marrow for a little Queensland boy get left on a tarmac in the US? That's what his mum wants to know, as without it, her son will die. Shallon and little Matteo join me now. Shallon, I really appreciate your time. Talk me through the emotions of the past few days. At one point, thinking there's so much excitement that the bone marrow is on its way to being told it's missing and no one knows where it is. Uh, so the first lot, it was it was very exciting to know that we were having a donor, that they were harvest, ready to go. It was ready for transplant. We are all organised. It was very exciting. And then as of Tuesday, um, when he was having chemo, we actually found out from our oncologist that... It wasn't sent on the plane last week. It was actually just left at the airport. So my instant reaction, I was absolutely devastated, um, furious, and just mm. honestly disappointed at the health system and whoever is responsible for this. I can't imagine the, the disbelief and anger around that. How does something like this happen? How does it go missing? That's it. That's my biggest thing. For such a life-saving measure, how was it left unsupervised and how, how did it not get on the plane? Like, who was the irresponsible person or who was so naive that just they didn't look after it, it did not meet the airport, it did not meet Australia and it has not arrived here. It has been a big few days for you, hasn't it? Are you okay? I'm just tired, I'm exhausted, same with Matteo. Um, it's just been long, we, ha we haven't really had answers. We finally spoke to our oncologist and we've got some answers. So. It's, it's just tiring because mentally we're prepared. We were prepared for a mission next Tuesday uh, for conditioning and transplant. So mentally you're ready for the days prepared. Um, so it's just, it's tiring and you're, just, you're helpless as a mother. You've, you've got no power. You can't just go pick this thing up for your son. Like it's, it's exhausting. Mm. So you have no idea what happened, whether it was left in the sun, whether it's still viable, but you've now been told it is in transit. Do you know how close it is? Yes, yeah, so we spoke to our oncologist, um, he's an extraordinary man. Uh, he rang me roughly lunchtime, just after lunch, he let me know that it's actually in transit. It's hoping to arrive in Australia late tomorrow afternoon, early Saturday. And then we are planning, if everything goes good, it needs to be lab tested. We don't know the condition mm. until it's lab tested to see if it's viable because we don't, no one knows how long it was left unattended. No one knows the condition until it arrives and then um, hopefully, if everything's good, it's admission on the 4th of March and tr uh, transplant around the 12th, 13th. Are you allowing yourself to get excited about that? Not yet. Mm. No, I, w I won't get excited. I'm, oh, I'm a little bit, but I'm, I can't be excited until we get the lab results to know that it's viable and that this, mm. this is the donor cells that are going to work for him. I understand that. Um, look, I want to bring in now Associate Professor Nada Hamad, your President of the Bone Marrow Transplant Society. Nada, there's 26 million people in this country. Why does Matteo need a donor from overseas? It's important to match the immune systems, and so to find a match you need a big pool of people. So it's hard to find a match and there's not enough people on the registry, so we need more people, Australian people, in the registry. So is the problem you've got just not enough people in Australia have signed up? The more people we have in Australia, the better because then you rely less on international donors. It's less expensive. It's also logistically easier. At the end of the day, that product, that beautiful, amazing, altruistic gift mm. can be compromised. And so it is really important that we more rely on what we have in Australia than we do overseas. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a long time because it requires a lot of people to be part of a registry. Are people reluctant because they think it's an invasive procedure? I think sometimes it sounds really scary, bone marrow transplant and bone marrow donation. So it's not an invasive procedure like a surgical procedure. It's more like a blood donation. There's very minor risks and it's very safe. And we usually prioritize the health of the donor above all else. We make sure they have their own doctor, make sure it will not harm them when they are donating. So you're saying it's as simple as taking blood? For being a donor on the list, you just have to take an extra tube of blood to make sure that we can have your information available if somebody's looking for a donor. And when you're donating, it takes a few hours, but it, it, you know, it is like giving mm. blood. So there could be someone in Australia right now who's a match for Matteo. How do we sign up? It's possible that there is a donor and signing up, you, you would go to a blood donation centre. There's usually a QR code on a poster that says, you know, if you're 18 to 35, please log in, you know, use the QR code, sign up. 
Thank you, Associate Professor Nada Hamid. We appreciate your time today. And um, Shalon, I really hope that everything goes OK with Matteo. Obviously, he got bored during the interview. He's having a little sleep. Sending all of our yeah. love to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.